everyone. I am here at the Four Seasons Denver at the Healthcare Providers Transformation Assembly. I'm here with Mahek Shah, who is the project director and senior researcher at Harvard Business School. So thank you, Mahek, for being here with us. It's a pleasure to be here. You're leading some great sessions in our program, some roundtables yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled. So as a senior researcher at Harvard Business School, you're leading the school's value measurement for healthcare projects. And I'm curious, tell me about a, a brief glimpse into what you're doing and you know, how your research is helping executives in this industry. Sure. Well, we work with many organizations. Historically, it's been health systems, but increasingly we're working with corporations and governments and ministries of health around the world to really help them educate them, provide them knowledge on what value-based healthcare is, and provide them a glimpse into the toolkit that we prescribe uh, for entering this new world of healthcare delivery, the future of healthcare, and understanding what's needed to, in terms of measurement, in terms of reorganization of their workforce, and where to, to provide them a strategy of how to really be a leader in this in this new wave and all this change, and accomplish that. There's a lot of change going on, so that's yes. very important. <laughs> um, so you're teaching and advising these executives at the healthcare system, and you know, teaching how to better understand um, and measure their outcomes and costs. And so, how has delivering more value for the patient really transformed decision making from the provider perspective? Mm -hmm. So I think that when you understand and align value by measurement of outcomes and measurement of costs and really putting the patient back at the center of care. Much like other in parts of our economy, uh, healthcare should have the patient at the center. And that's our customer. And when you organize around delivering on the outcomes and being held accountable on those outcomes, you're really aligning providers and how they've been trained and want to practice medicine and deliver healthcare by achieving optimal outcomes at the lowest possible costs. And when you do that, you align the business interests of a health system that needs to meet its goals and objectives, mm -hmm. along with the provider's interests of delivering high quality care at the lowest possible cost, so that you can then uh, treat more patients or spend more time with patients, and you improve, by doing those things, you improve the patient experience, mm -hmm. patient satisfaction, and even provider satisfaction. Sure. So how are these new technologies that are coming into play, like AI, for instance, how are they creating time to really care and drive optimal outcomes um, for not only patients, but for the providers and the payers as well? Right, I think technology is a wonderful force that's entered healthcare and is drastically changing the way we deliver healthcare, access healthcare information, both on for patients, for providers, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know health systems in general. And I think that in order to really optimally use technology. We have to understand where does it fit into an existing workflow, but then optimize and evolve that workflow to really meet the needs of the patients, the providers, and use of that technology. So I think various areas where technology plays high value, in my opinion, is the point of care at the front end of everything from when you come in to see your physician, um, to have information already you know, on a dashboard or readily available to understand your needs as a patient and as a caregiver. Um, but then for the provider, having that data re readily accessible. Um, and I think technology is doing that both on the point of care when they're in that sacred relationship between physician and, and patient, and, but also on the back end when they're doing, whether it's documentation or whether it's, uh, you know, care coordination. And that's where I think machine learning and tools like AI can really play an important role because it augments the, the capabilities of a provider and therefore augments the delivery of care at a hospital or at a, another facility. Right. So we'll be seeing how this all plays out. Yes. <laughs> um, so is there a specific framework that executives are observing you know, to restructure their healthcare system? Um, is there a common theme that you're seeing? Well, I think when they organize around value, and really take some initiatives and invest in these resources, then they're really achieving high uh, benefits from being a lead market leader in, in the future of healthcare. And they can do this in uh, three ways. I think they can reorganize around the medical conditions, uh, what we call integrated practice units. Or it's a multidisciplinary team of people that is focused around a particular medical condition. So traditionally we're you know, sort of organized around vertical silos. 
uh, you know, you've got your department of cardio cardiology and dermatology and, and so forth. But if we organize around certain conditions that are very commonplace, uh, both on the acute side, but also on chronic care, then you begin to understand that healthcare no longer is an individual sport. You know, the doctor alone can't optimally treat a medical condition. But it's a team-based sport, right? Football and basketball. And so there are many players involved. And so you need to reorganize your health system around these principles. And when you do that, care coordination increases, uh, workforce morale we've sh seen increases. People just feel like they're part of the team. And, and the patients and families see that there's a team involved and that they feel very satisfied in that experience and that care. The second thing is really focus around measurement. And so measurement of both outcomes, so clinical outcomes, but also patient reported outcomes. So what, what matters to the patient? Um, things like being able to go back to day-to-day -day activities that they used to do. If they're an athlete, being able to play sports again. Those very you know, logic, uh, commonplace outcomes. But then in addition to that, uh, measurement of the costs of care delivery. And, and when I say costs, I'm not talking about charges that are based on often a charge master. But it's, it's around uh, understanding what does it actually take to deliver care at the medical condition level or at the patient level in order to really uh, optimize that outcome and achieve that, that patient outcome that we want. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this past summer, you recently wrote an article about the appointment of Dr. Achul Gawande, mm -hmm. who is you know, the new CEO of this venture, um, led by Amazon JP Morgan and Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts. You know, He's taking back uh, US healthcare. And do you think other executives should be following his example? What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that you know, with the appointment of Athul, I was very happy to see a physician be, uh, put in the role. And being based in Boston, being local, uh, I was happy that it's staying. This new co will be based there. And I think that he, you know, executives need to not necessarily follow the path of Atul Gawande. I think he has a unique skill set that resonates with both clinical leaders, but also the everyday citizen, mm -hmm. um, based on his uh, excellent writing and so forth. But I think that he, what they're trying to do at this, this joint venture and this, this new entity is really creating what I think about as a sandbox of 1.2 million lives at the three companies. And really from the day zero, from the get-go, saying, look, we're gonna, ex we're gonna try and we're gonna fail a lot, but we're going to succeed eventually through trial and error and create scalable solutions that are applicable to these 1.2 million lives, but also therefore have the opportunity to be scaled even um, exponentially to the masses here in the US and with a you know sort of an unlimited resource uh, mindset and it's very unique in this market you know most of the time you're constrained by money and by resources but in this case it's an opportunity to really change healthcare and see uh, allow for true successes and solutions to come out of it knowing that you it's you're you're going to you know uh, fail a few times before you get it right <laughs> and i think that you know, Executives just need to sort of think around uh, being able to make this sort of investment, even in their regional local markets, of technology, of reorganizing around the patient, and really thinking about what value, uh, where does value come from, and how you deliver on it. You'll have to keep us updated on that. I will do my best. <laughs> well, we're so happy that you're here. You've been leading some great sessions. Um, so tell me, what do you think are the benefits of attending a small, intimate, C-level program like the Millennium Alliance is running? Well, I think that the intimate nature of the conference here has allowed people to really engage uh, in, dis in fruitful discussions that begin to start to build on a relationship or think about ways to collaborate. And I think that you've done it in a couple of ways by making it small and intimate. But at the same time, you've been able to have uh, a lot enough time to where people can really have discussions in between sessions of, of learning, but also during uh, you know, the, the keynotes and so forth, to where uh, people really feel like they're getting a lot of value out of it. There's so many conferences every week. You could practically go to three uh, you know, on the same day in different parts of the country. But I think that you know, people are becoming more selective and should be selective about where they attend. And I think that you know, getting a lot of return on your investment is important. And I think that the Millennium Conference allows that. 
Oh, well, great. Well, thank you so much. My and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, <laughs> Thanks. Good. Thanks for having me.